Welcome back to a new video. So today I want to show you the new updates for the upcoming version of MD Talk, which is a Python uh, software I've written, which enables you to create these kinds of uh, table of contents, clickable table of contents of Markdown files, like this, for example. The updates consist only in minor optimizations, but I've learned a thing or two I want to share with you. Okay, so we'll start with the um, API file. So this is the git diff. Uh, since I still haven't published the latest uh, version of MD Talk, this is just a preview. But um, for example, here there's this, this function, which is called remove HTML tags. So all the lines in red are lines removed, while the green ones are lines added. So here there was a list of um, instructions, which will, they will all uh, repeated. As you see, they are very similar one to the other. The only thing that changed is this uh, first value here, because this is a chain of um, string changes. So the line, uh, as you see here, the line string is overwritten by this regex uh, function here, and it's done multiple times. Uh, so instead of um, doing it like this, repeating the same thing, you can just do a very simple for loop and um, uh, use um, as parameter of the for loop the regex pattern each time. So these um, values are defined in, um, in the constants file. These are very long strings and uh, they are passed in as this value here. And so this was one way to do it. Okay, so there was another way to do it, but I uh, decided to go for this way because you could do, so this is the original source code. So this is the function, remove HTML tags. So instead of doing a, a for loop, I could have done something like this. If you do a command like this, so there's um, a new list is created. It's saved in the line variable and you still have the same um, function call, the same for loop here. It's inside um, this list comprehension. So this is a list comprehension. However, there is this um, special operator, an assignment expression. So it's uh, defined in pep 572. And um, so since the line uh, variable needs to be uh, updated every time, and so this is a kind of assignment uh, thing. However, if you see the, the problem here is uh, since I needed only the last uh, element, see I do minus one here, which means the last element of the, this list, there is no point uh, in uh, creating a list of comprehension and saving all the values in memory. So. Uh, the right thing to do instead of using this expression here and the assignment operator okay that you can uh, if you want maybe there are some um, use cases but this wasn't the case anyway so instead of doing something like this uh, this is better suited okay so for example to use this assignment operator in a way that makes sense you can do it like like this for example you save the value of this um, search um, regex thing here in the mass variable. And then as it's written here, you do something in the mass. So you, it enables you to save uh, some lines of code. Same, uh, same with this loop and uh, with this um, list comprehension. So yeah, it's just a way of saving a few lines. Anyway, moving on to the other news. I changed some um, typing definitions in the function prototypes. So I discovered that you can, um, instead of using the simple typing with one type only, there are different options. So for example, um, if a function needs a, a list of uh, strings, uh, you can define it like this. So a list of uh, str. And so here, for example, I removed uh, this code, which raised a type error if um, the values inside these two lists were in strings. If you do like this, uh, and you pass something uh, different than a list of strings, uh, it won't be raised uh, on runtime because um, these typings are only checked uh, by some um, linters, for example, MyPy. So this is the responsibility of a developer to check uh, the correct value type. And if you read the PEP 484, which is called TypePins, which is written everything you need to know, since Python is a dynamically typed language, to put some order in your um, code, you can do something like this. If you know, for example, that name is a string, you can uh, use this kind of expression. So variable, a column, and a 
type like this. With this kind of syntax, you can generate even complex annotations, such as these ones. And uh, so I've used um, quite a few of them in this uh, update that weren't there before. So yeah, as I said, this one is uh, one of the most, one of the easiest ones. And yeah, as you can see, you can do it like this as well. And then we have these two variables, for example, this one types uh, header type counter. Now I'll show you what it means. It was defined um, as a simple dict before, like this. And the same one for so this one. So this is a header type counter. This is a header duplicate counter. So now there are two different variable types. And now I'll show you. Okay, so I created this file, which um, in practice, it serves no real purpose in the code except defining the some variable types. So these are all dicts, so objects. So there are just a few of them. And uh, the way it works uh, is that you import this um, class here from the typing module. Then you create your inherited classes like this. And then uh, each attribute of the class uh, is uh, what you expect inside your dict. So these are the keys on the left uh, hand side and the types are on the right hand side. Okay, if you see the header one, which is one of the complete ones. So header, the header object, which is a dict, has three kinds of keys. So type, text original, and text anchor link. And the first one type is an int, then the second and third one are strings. So if you go on the Python documentation, there is a typing uh, page called uh, supports for type hints. So here there is the same example as the one we saw before. It's the same example, exactly the same example. And then, uh, as you can see here, this is a complex uh, a type, so a list of floats. Uh, um, here they made a, an alias. So this is in here, type alias is, here they called it a vector. You can pass it to a function like this. So vector, and uh, this is the return value of the function, the return type, still a vector. Okay, if you go to the, um, here to this paragraph, typing the type dict. So special construct to add type hints to a dictionary. This is what is written here. And so type dict declares a dictionary type that expects all of its instances to have a certain set of keys, where each key is associated with a value of a consistent type. The sign is very important. This expectation is not checked at runtime, but is only enforced by type checkers. So here, um, okay, for example, there is a point in the 2D space. So there are the X and Y uh, variables, both ints, label is a string, so here, x, y, int, int, and string, label. Okay, so this is okay. And the second one is not because there's no x and y in the dictionary. Now the problem I have uh, in MD talk uh, is that uh, some um, dictionary keys uh, at the moment, they have uh, spaces. So for example, in this object here, indentation log element, the index um, key is fine, but then there is a list marker which has spaces and the station spaces, there's a space here. And uh, you, if you define them, uh, okay, let's see what happens if I enable these. Okay, so I enabled the two uh, keys in the, in the type dict. If I run the tests, okay. See, it's an invalid syntax to do something like that in Python anyway. So those uh, variables will need, need to be changed. It, and uh, yeah, so you can't use them like this. So for the moment, I'll keep them like this. And yeah, I also have this uh, other object here. Uh, they would be numerical um, uh, variables, but they aren't allowed. So here I have to put an, uh, maybe a letter in front, such as H, because they are headers. So these would need to be changed in the future. And uh, yeah, there are others as well. And yeah, this is defined in pep 589. This is the title to type dict. And uh, it's written an example here for the reason they opened this, uh, this pep. So if we see the motivations in practice, it's as it's written here, the way it was before, it's that it was too generic to use the, st the static data types. And so they invented this, uh, this way to define the keys of the dictionaries. Okay, then I discovered uh, that there are um, dict comprehensions as well. 
Okay, so in this function, so you can create a dict comprehension very easily. So in this function, I return um, the dictionary like this. So return dictionary with this notation, the um, curly brackets. The first um, value here is, is the key of the dictionary, which is in this case, it's an integer defined here. So for i in range uh, one, two, etc., and it's replaced here. And then there is a nested dictionary with these uh, keys. Uh, index list marking nutrition spaces and uh, before it was like this so there was a for loop for i in range one etc indentation log like this of i equals dictionary so the red lines have been deleted and they have been replaced with the green ones i think it's more readable uh, the last important change is in the build anchor link function so I decided to use a text sum for the header duplicate counter dictionary, which has a key. Before um, this change, it contained the anchor link string, which uh, in some cases it could be very long. So it's not a, um, a matter of speed performance, because if you use a um, text sum like I did here with this new change, it will be a little slower. It's a memory optimization. In fact, now I'll show you something. Okay, so. This is a Python uh, uh, interactive CLI. So uh, if we do something with a simple sys, then a equals dict. Okay. Then we define um, a value like this. So this would be a very long string. So a is repeated uh, two to the power of 30 times, added with uh, the string b, still the same number of times. The string c, it's still the same number of times, equals one. So c it takes quite a long time just to save this value because the computer needs to generate this string. So if I try to print A like this, so remember there's just one value at the moment, it takes a few seconds. So this is what happened in this function before in the worst case possible. So the problem with this, if you do something like this, is that all this, um, all this data, the key, is saved somewhere in your memory. If you do something like this, this is the correct call. This is the first size, then you do this one. So you add the size of each um, keys and values. Okay, so this is the size value for this um, dictionary. However, if you do something like this, let's say use this method here on the left. So hash lib. And then we still define the key like this, but we change it using the hash function. Let's try with SHA1. So SHA1. And then we need to encode it because uh, the argument of uh, hashlib functions need to be um, bytes. And so uh, you need to do dot. Okay. And then it needs the hex digest. Okay. So if we replace. Um, a, so A equals dict, then A of uh, this value here, okay, equals one. Okay, see, it still takes a while, okay. We try computing the size again. So size equals, then size plus equals. Okay, so it's just 301 instead of, so see the difference here. This is the size of the previous dictionary, the one without the hash function as key and it's much 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 bigger yeah so internally python uses the hash function this one for example in the dictionaries i mean okay which computes an um, an integer value which can also be negative yeah this is this is fast but apparently has uh, more collisions than the normal uh, cryptographical hash functions such as this one so yeah i decided to do something like this to decrease the memory usage and so when you use uh, these um, kinds of functions, the output will always have the same length. In case, in case of SEC1 is, yeah, so 40 characters using the hex output, which is uh, probably much less uh, than uh, some of the worst cases in here, since this function contains the anchor links, which in some cases can be very long. And so just to remember you what anchor links are. So these ones, so if you go on readme, you go on row. Okay, so these uh, are the anchor links. So in normal cases, yes, they are very short. 
but in theory they can be thousands of characters long and uh, impact your memory. I think we're done for this video and uh, if you liked my insights, if you found them useful, uh, put a like and subscribe and uh, as always, bye bye.